The legs at the wall sequence is one of the most healing that I know. It was my go-to for when I was sick with lines, and it was at that time that I learned how deeply healing the sequence can be. I offer it to you, especially if you have got high blood pressure. I have many students who have been able to actually permanently uh, lower their blood pressure and either get off their meds or lower the amount of medications that they need when they practice it regularly. It is also the safest way to stretch your limbs, your legs and your hips if they are very tight. So the back can remain neutral and then you can stretch safely without putting any undue strain, especially on those lower vertebrae. So if you've already herniated your discs, please, this is probably the only way you should be stretching your legs for a while. And if you feel that you're at risk, again, just support your back and let the legs do, do the stretching. When you're doing the sequence uh, that I'm showing you in the next video, I want you to listen to your body. There's a portion uh, where I suggest that you might want to lay over a bolster underneath your sacrum. If that doesn't feel good to you, maybe you try a blanket like this or a yoga block or nothing at all. The same goes for the twists. If they don't feel right, don't do them. Please watch the video before you attempt it. Uh, play around with the props, find out what works for you, and then when you do the sequence on your own, give yourself all the time you need in each of the different positions, um, rather than just speeding along with me in the video. Um, I also want to show you in, in a, a slower way the, the uh, support that I offer up for the, for the neck in the video. So basically you take your blanket, or your pillow, but I prefer a blanket because I can create a little uh, support for, for my neck. So many of us, the neck is flattening out because we're looking forward too much in, in our modern day life, and we need to be supporting and, and kind of nurturing back the curve in our neck. So giving yourself a nice little uh, support for, for the back of the neck is a lovely thing to do. Some of you might need to roll it up even more and then fold the other side of the blanket over so that the back of your head is also elevated. In that case, you'll know that your shoulders are really rounded uh, forward quite a bit. But for now, let this be your support. So again, take time. Uh, watch the video, fuss around with your props, find all your sweet spots, and then just give yourself a lot of delicious time in this very, very healing sequence. Enjoy. Begin by sitting with one hip near the wall. Lean back and spin to bring your legs up and your back to the floor. Take a moment to assess. If you find it's impossible to keep your legs straight, then you need to scoot away from the wall until your legs can be straight and your entire back, including the sacrum, is in contact with the floor. If you find your chin is pointing straight up to the ceiling, shoulders rounding forward, you need to create support for your neck and for the back of your head. Take a pillow or a blanket and roll it into a nice support for your neck and the back of your head. Once you've settled into this pose, begin to focus on your breath, breathing in and out through the nose in long, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Now release your legs to the side, taking a moment to make sure your legs are evenly extended from the midline, and if not, bring the more flexible leg to the same angle as the less flexible one. Breathe. Next, you can bring the soles of the feet together, knees to the side. You may gently use your hands to extend your knees closer to the wall. Move in 
to the hip stretch by bringing your right ankle to your left knee. Bend your left knee only until your sacrum lifts off the floor and then work on extending the sacrum back to the floor. It's important to keep the back long, keeping it out of flexion. If you like, you can begin to play with rocking slightly side to side. Now switch your legs. You can put the gentlest pressure on your left knee to extend the knee closer to the wall. From here, bend your knees, keeping your feet on the wall. If you find it is impossible for your knees to stay together, you need to take a strap and tie your knees together around the thigh. This is going to help open up your psoas muscle. This may be an excellent place for you to stay if you feel tightness in your lower back. From here, we're going to move into a twist, releasing the legs to the left, looking to the right. If you find it is impossible to release your legs to the left and keep your right shoulder on the floor, then you need to take a bolster or some blanket and support your legs so that the shoulder can remain on the floor. Next, you'll move the twist to the other side, releasing the legs to the right, looking to the left, breathing high up into the upper chest, softening the neck, softening the eyes. The following pose is legs up the wall, but with the sacrum supported by a bolster. Press into the wall with your feet to lift the hips up. Slide the bolster underneath your low back and settle into the pose. At this point, you will have no support underneath your neck and your head. Take time to settle here. scanning the body for any holding, any tension, releasing whatever you may find on the exhale. Enjoy the nourishing qualities of the breath, the nourishing qualities of the pose. To come out, press your feet into the wall, lift the hips off the bolster, slide it out of the way, and release back onto the floor.